This lesson will cover the following topics. The role and the different types of engine valve timing. Variable valve timing. Operations on the valve timing. First, let's take a look at the role of the engine timing. The timing synchronizes the movement of the camshaft and the crankshaft to open and close the valves. The camshaft controls the inlet valves to allow the entry of fresh gas into the cylinder and the exhaust valves to evacuate the burnt gases. The connection between the camshaft and the crankshaft can be made via the following components. A belt, a chain, a series of sprockets and a chain, a series of sprockets and a belt. These are the four types of drive that currently exist. Now let's take a look at the belt drive in more detail. The timing consists of a sprocket driven by the crankshaft, one or more fixed rollers, a tensioning roller, one or more toothed camshaft pulleys, and a toothed belt. Now let's take a look at the chain drive. The timing principally comprises the crankshaft sprocket, the camshaft sprocket, the chain tensioning device, a chain. Certain engines are equipped with a self-adjusting sprocket to drive the second camshaft. Finally, let's take a look at the timing using a series of sprockets linked to a chain or a belt. These configurations are usually used for high-pressure diesel engines. In this section, we covered the following points. The timing synchronizes the movement of the camshaft and the crankshaft to open and close the valves. There are four types of drive, by a belt, a chain, a series of sprockets and a chain, and by a series of sprockets and a belt. The belt drive system consists of crankshaft pulleys, camshaft pulleys, rollers and a toothed belt. The chain drive system comprises the crankshaft sprockets, camshaft, the tensioning device and a chain. The front end configuration may comprise a combined drive system with a series of sprockets and chain or a series of sprockets and belt. The role of variable valve timing is to optimize engine performance by increasing torque at low engine speed and power at high engine speed. The principle is to vary the point at which the inlet valves open and close using a camshaft dephaser. To obtain maximum power, the angle between the opening and closure of the inlet valve must be as great as possible. When replacing the timing belt, the condition of the dephasers must be checked. The dephasers must be integral to the camshaft. The dephasers should not transmit any rotary movements if you try to turn them by hand. In this section, we covered the following points. The role of variable valve timing is to optimize engine performance by increasing torque at low engine speed and power at high engine speed. The dephasers should be integral to the camshaft and should not transmit any rotary movements if you try to turn them by hand. Now let's take a look at the precautions to be observed when carrying out an operation on the valve timing. This procedure applies to all types of drive. The procedure for removal consists firstly of aligning the marks by rotating the crankshaft and locking the engine with a pin. The belt, the chain or the sprockets must then be removed. After removing the drive, you must never turn the crankshaft nor the camshaft. It is essential that you refer to the technical documentation before removing the valve timing components. Rupture or damage to a timing belt can be caused by the following. Belt staining caused by an oil leakage. Failure to comply with the replacement interval. Damage to the belt during storage or when fitting. 
failure to comply with the correct tightening torques and the parts to be replaced, failure to comply with the information relating to cleanliness during the fitting process, incorrect alignment of the pulleys. Now let's look at how to replace a timing belt. A timing belt is removed by aligning the marks by turning the crankshaft, then locking the engine with a pin. Any removed belt must be replaced. The tensioning roller and the fixed rollers must be replaced. Once the belt is refitted, it must be tensioned using the manual tensioning roller or positioning the automatic tensioning roller. You should always refer to the technical documentation to find out about the special refitting procedures for each engine type. Now let's look at measuring the belt tension. The tension is a force expressed in newtons present on the inside of the belt. Belt tension cannot be measured directly. In the case of a manual tensioning roller, a vibration is measured depending on the tension. When a belt is tensioned and under load, it vibrates at a frequency proportional to the tension. There is therefore a direct relationship between the vibration frequency of the belt, the length of belt used, and the tension in the belt. It is this vibration frequency that is measured. Now let's take a look at the belt tension measuring device. The measuring device should ideally be positioned at the center of the belt section to obtain a stronger, more precise signal that is easier to measure. The measurement does not depend on the vibration excitement force or the position on the belt section. The belt tension values measured in hertz together with the measuring point are provided in the technical documentation. Now let's look at the checks to be carried out before removing and refitting a timing chain. After having aligned the marks, and locked the engine with a pin, the chain must firstly be released and then removed. Before refitting, it is essential to carry out the following operations. Check for any traces of wear on the chain housings and sprockets. Check that there are no splits or excessive wear in the chain. Clean all the joint faces. Check that any thread holes have no oil within them. Check that the sprockets are correctly aligned. You should always refer to the technical documentation to find out about the special refitting procedures for each engine type. Lastly, let's look at the specific operations relating to removal and refitting a series of sprockets and a balancer shaft. When refitting, it is essential to carry out the following operations. Check that there are no traces of wear on any of the sprockets before refitting them. Check the alignment of the teeth on the free play adjusting sprocket. Check the tooth clearance for all of the sprockets. When refitting the balancer shaft, the balancer shaft timing must be checked. The tooth clearance for the balancer shaft sprockets and the crankshaft toothed wheel must also be checked using a special tool. You must refer to the technical documentation to find out about the special procedures involved. In this section, we covered the following points. The procedure for removal consists firstly of aligning the marks by rotating the crankshaft and locking the engine with a pin. Preventing any malfunction of a timing belt requires certain precautions to be observed. The tensioning roller and the fixed rollers must be changed when replacing the timing belt. Measuring the tension of a belt equipped with a manual tensioning roller is performed by measuring the vibration frequency. The measurement device should ideally be positioned at the center of the belt section to obtain a stronger, more precise signal that is easier to measure. Before refitting the chain, it is essential to clean the mating faces, check for any traces of wear, for any blockage of the tapping, and check the alignment of the sprocket marks. When removing and refitting a series of sprockets, you must check that there are no traces of wear on the sprockets, as well as checking the tooth clearance. 